Right now, we're going to talk to the uh, Sixers president of business operations, Chris Heck, as the Sixers Youth Foundation has a big event coming up on Monday. We've got some other things that we want to touch on as well as we are getting into the playoff season. Chris, welcome back, pal. How are you? Uh, thanks for having me, Mike. It's uh, it's always a pleasure being on your show. Yeah, man. It's uh, We're getting to the playoff time, the pressure-filled time, the time where the fans have been waiting for all year long. And uh, you guys obviously have had a great year, tough one last night. There's some things that we will get into uh, regarding some things that are uh, positive with the team. Uh, but there's some things yeah. that... The fans should know, including the 4th Annual Sixers Youth Foundation Gala that is going to be on Monday night at the Fillmore in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of our favorite nights of the year, and um, it's definitely the, the last event and the biggest event uh, before the playoffs. And as we know, that uh, excitement from last year, uh, we expect... Uh, to see again and then some. So it's going to be a fun run for us this spring. Yeah, you got guys like Dr. J, Allen Iverson, some of the current players and coaches uh, that will be there. Uh, Wyclef will be there as well. So this is a pretty big event, and the proceeds all go towards the Sixers Youth Foundation. That's right. We uh, we focus on uh, middle-aged school kids and uh, that are uh, at, at risk or in a tougher environment in the Philadelphia area. Um, that goes all the way down to um, South Jersey, of course, and uh, to Delaware. And um, it's really an important component of what we do um, and what we think our obligation is to the city. So uh, it's fun. Um, we have uh, it's it's definitely not your typical gala. It's it's more like a nightclub theme uh, with a, a lot of fun and interaction with our players, uh, past and present, um, and all the folks that, that work for the franchise and, and our great fans. Now, Chris, is this something that is open to uh, the public? I mean, can people come and uh, be a part of this? Uh, how, uh, uh, If they can, because I see there's a big silent auction with some awesome uh, opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's a couple ways to get involved. Uh, one is to actually go to the event. We have about 700 guests. Um, that uh, pay to uh, and contribute to, to come to the event itself. Um, but we also have all fans access right now to jump in on the silent auction where we have a couple hundred items. and uh, They're pretty interesting. Everything from uh, uh, spending time with uh, Alan Iverson and Dr. J individually um, all the way to uh, Elton Brand. And uh, we go into... Uh, you can have an opportunity to to fly on a fighter jet pilot, with a fighter jet pilot. So it's it, it covers the whole gamut, and that includes also autograph items from all sports um, throughout the country. And um, it's pretty cool, and it, you should definitely check out the list. Chris Heck, the uh, Sixers president of business operations, is with us. It's a, a silent auction. Fans can bid at SixersYouthFoundation.org slash auction. There's also an opportunity to be the uh, ceremonial bell ringer before Sixers home games, which is uh, usually reserved for some sort of famous person who happens to be sitting uh, courtside at a Sixer game, which leads me to the Sixers shooting to the top of attendance rankings in the NBA. Uh, this was from the Philadelphia uh, the Sports Business Journal. And uh, it starts off, right. Chris, by saying six years ago, StubHub had tickets for less than a dollar. Uh, if I want to get a ticket now, am I getting one for a buck? Uh, unless you have a really good friend out there that has season tickets. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we do have people uh, reselling tickets on StubHub. Um, and our partnership with StubHub is uh, is very uh, it's positive for all of our fans. We we like when new people get the chance to come to a game, uh, which is certainly available. But uh, yeah, we're in an eighty plus uh, run for sellouts, and um, it's it's awesome. I mean, our fans are are second to none. We saw it with uh, the reaction with Bryce Harper and the Phillies and. Um, we love it. We love it for all of our sports teams in Philadelphia and uh, the Sixers fans in a basketball town. Um, it couldn't be a better place right now. 
Yeah, Chris, I'm reading in the article that you have a season ticket list with over 12,000 names on the waiting list. It's like the Green Bay Packers all of a sudden here. Uh, <laughs> more than 14,000 season ticket holders. You know, And this comes after a time where – you know, there were a lot of people, fans, and some media members that would suggest, man, the Sixers were turning their backs on their fans and that these people would never come back. And it seems that uh, that has not proven yeah. to be true. No, I, I think those were people that were saying that that don't really understand Philadelphia fans. And, you know, we were very transparent of what we were doing and trying to build something special. Um, we weren't interested in just being the – seventh or eighth seed uh, playoff team at the first round exit. We wanted to go for a championship and that's still the plan. And we are, um, we actually have that product on the court now. And, um, you know, who knows where this thing's going to end up, but our goal is to have a parade at the end of the day. Yeah, and I know uh, you know the owner Josh Harris came out and he said, "Look, the pressure's on. It's problematic if we don't win, and it, that comes with all the people in that building, right? When the people start showing up, the pressure goes up, and that's from top to bottom: players, coaches, and people in your role." I, I, I heard that quote as well, and I'm like, you know, it's it's something we live with every day, and we we love. We're all super competitive, and I think that's why it works in Philadelphia because Philadelphians are competitive and and want the best and um yeah it's like game on you know this is what we're doing it for and it does include every single person that's involved with the organization and the fans too um the expectations are high and uh we're we're not going to stop until we complete the task and and, and then we won't stop uh, as well we're going to try to continue to go um there's no reason that we can't be the next Golden State Warriors. And that's the, that's the goal here. Yeah, I think a lot of times uh, people lose sight of the fact that uh, Joel and Ben are some young men with a lot, with very little NBA experience. And Joel, very little basketball yeah, experience. Yeah, Tobias Harris, too. Yeah, oh, he's yeah, a younger yeah, guy, you too. Think about that. Uh, absolutely. He's 26 years old. Um, you know, uh, Ben and Joel are, are both younger. Uh, both have played, at, and and that's the thing at the NBA. Everyone's like, um, you hear the critics with Ben um, with his shooting. Uh, the guy is unreal, and he is a superstar. So he's only going to get better. Um, he's uh, almost averaging a triple double, and he's a point guard at six ten, six eleven. So uh, we <laughs> we we like our future with these guys for sure. Uh, Chris Heck, the uh, president of uh, business, business operations for the Philadelphia 76ers. It's the fourth annual Sixers Youth Foundation Gala uh, presented by VIP Wireless. Monday night, 630 at the Fillmore on Allen Street in Philadelphia with the proceeds for the event supporting the Sixers Youth Foundation. Allen Iverson, Dr. J, Wyclef. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to do a silent auction with prizes for a meet and greet with Dr. J. And by the way, I got a chance to meet Dr. J this summer, and it's uh, one of those experiences that you'll never forget. Allen Iverson as well. What a uh, you, you see, Allen Alan is the greatest fan at the game ever. He runs up and down the sideline like a crazy man. He's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, he's not short on energy, and uh, he is. You know. He's- he resonates still with the fans. Uh, he's a true rock star, and um, <laughs> it's fun to watch the reaction of not only him but uh, the fans around him and, and how he interacts well, with them. And, I was there the yeah, night. You get that chance. I was there the night Mike Trout was there, yeah. and I forget who else. Yeah. There was like three people that were shown on that Jumbotron. It was Mike Trout who got a, a great cheer. There was somebody else who got a big cheer, and then Allen Iverson – his cheer trumps everybody else's. I mean, he's still the biggest yeah. like cheer that you get in that building. It's unbelievable. It's incre- it, it is incredible. You know, you just think back, you know, like, wow, 2001, that was a long time ago. Um, and that's when the last time we were in the championship with AI at the, at the top. But uh, this guy, you know, he'll always be a sixer. And I think that's like Dr. J and, the legends that we have, we just we just retired uh, Moses Malone's jersey. Yep. We have legends like no other, and it's just so fun to bring them back and celebrate with the fans and, and not forget how dominant this franchise has been 
for the last 60 years, and it's time to bring it back again, and we think we're, we're right there on the cusp. Hey, fans and listeners, you guys can bid on the silent auction at SixersYouthFoundation.org slash auction, and that's Monday night with the Sixers Youth Foundation. Chris Heck is on the show right here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Chris, we always appreciate it, man, and we'll uh, see you soon up in Philly. Uh, you're the best, Mike. All the, all the best to you. And uh, we, uh, we are always here for you, and uh, we appreciate the work you do. Thank you, man. Chris Heck, everybody. Sixers, Friday night and Sunday afternoon right here on 97.3 ESPN.